Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, Confessor, 1862, Italy. Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows was an Italian Passionist clerical student. Born to a professional family, he gave up ambitions of a secular career to enter the Passionist congregation. His life in the monastery was not extraordinary, yet he followed the rule of the congregation perfectly and was known for his great devotion to the sorrows of the Virgin Mary. He died from tuberculosis at the age of 23 in Isola del Gran Sasso, in the province of Teramo. He was canonized by Pope Benedict XV in 1920. Francesco Pazzetti was born on March 1, 1838, in Assisi, Italy the eleventh of thirteen children born to his mother, Agnes, and his father, Santa. The family were then resident in the town of Assisi, where Santa worked for the local government. Pazzetti was baptized on the day of his birth in the same font in which St. Francis of Assisi had been baptized. Shortly after Francis' birth Santa Pazzetti was transferred to a post at Montalta and thence to Spoleto where, in 1841, he was appointed legal assessor. In Spoleto the family was struck with a number of bereavements, the deaths of a baby girl, Rosa, in December 1841, of seven-year-old Adele in January 1842, and of Francis' mother, Agnes, in 1842. As a child and young man, Francis Pazzetti was well liked by his peers and had a reputation for great charity and piety. He was also known for the great care he took with regard to his appearance and would spend hours in preparing himself for parties. Francis could be a difficult child and was liable to bouts of anger. Francis was deeply involved with the social scene of Spoleto and soon earned for himself the nickname of the dancer. He was a ladies' man and had several romantic involvements and on the night he left for the monastery there were still hopes that he might become engaged to a local girl. He was educated first by the Christian brothers and then by the Jesuits in the town's college and there excelled, particularly in Latin. In 1851 Francis became desperately ill and promised to enter religious life if he recovered. Once he had recovered, his promise was soon forgotten. The same thing happened when he narrowly escaped a stray bullet during a hunting expedition with friends. His brother Paul had died in 1848 and his brother Lawrence committed suicide in 1853. In 1853 Francis again fell ill, this time afflicted with a throat abscess. He attributed his healing to the recently beatified Andrew Bibola, S.J. Once more he had promised to enter religious life upon his recovery and this time actually set the process in motion. He applied to join the Jesuits, but for some unknown reason never proceeded. Tragedy struck again when his sister, Mary Louisa, who had cared for Francis after their mother's death, died of cholera. After the cholera epidemic that killed Gabriel's sister ended, Spoleto clergy and civic authorities organized a procession of the ancient icon of the Virgin Mary in Spoleto's cathedral. Francis attended the procession and as the image passed by him, he felt an interior voice asking why he remained in the world. This event was the galvanizing force behind the first serious steps in Francis' religious vocation. After the procession he sought the advice of a priest and resolved to enter the Passionist congregation. As there was no Passionist house near Spoleto, it is most likely that Francis' choice was based on a personal devotion to the Passion of Christ. His father refused to give him permission to leave for the Passionists and enlisted several relatives to dissuade Francis from his course. Their attempts were unsuccessful and soon his father was convinced that Francis' intentions were sincere and not capricious. Accompanied by his brother Aloysius, a Dominican friar, Francis set out for the novitiate of the Passionists at Moro Valley. During their journey they visited several relatives who had been enlisted by Santa to encourage Francis to return to Spoleto, but this was to no avail. He arrived at the novitiate on September 19, 1856. Two days later he received the habit of the Passionists and the name Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows. The following year Gabriel pronounced his vows. During this time, and indeed until his death, Gabriel's spiritual life was under the care of his director. Father Norbert of Holy Mary. In June 1858 Gabriel and the other students moved to Pete Vittorina to continue their studies. Local disturbances meant they would stay only a year and, in July 1859, 
the group moved to the monastery of Isola del Gran Sasso in the province of Teramo. Gabriel proved an excellent student and his excellence in academic life was only outdone by the great progress he was making in his spiritual life. At the same time Gabriel began to display the first symptoms of tuberculosis. The news did not worry Gabriel, who was, in fact, joyful. He had prayed for a slow death so as to be able to prepare himself spiritually. Throughout his illness he remained cheerful and kept up all his usual practices. He was a source of great edification and inspiration to his fellow students, who sought to spend time with him at his deathbed. Gabriel had proved himself an exemplary religious and a perfect follower of the Passionist rule, being especially devoted to the Virgin Mary. On his deathbed he ordered his spiritual writings to be burnt for he feared they would tempt him to pride. Only his letters survive, alongside his resolutions which map the spiritual progress he made in his few years as a Passionist. Before he could be ordained a priest, Gabriel died in the retreat at Isola del Gran Sasso the early hours of February 27, 1862, in the presence of the community, holding close an image of Our Lady of Soros and smiling peacefully. Those who were with Gabriel when he died reported that at the moment of death, he sat up in bed and his face became radiant as he reached out to an otherwise unseen figure that was entering the room. It was the opinion of Father Norbert that St. Gabriel had seen the Virgin Mary at the very moment of his death. Gabriel was buried the day of his death. His companion in the novitiate, Bernard Mary of Jesus exclaimed, Tears come to my eyes and I am filled with shame for having been so far from the virtues that he attained in such a short time. Immediately thereafter Father Norbert wrote a biography of his life. In 1866, four years after the death of Gabriel, the Passionists were forced to abandon the monastery of Isola del Gran Sasso, and the church where Gabriel lay buried went deserted for thirty years. Since his death, the fame of Gabriel's sanctity had spread through the local area, as well as amongst the Passionists. In 1891 the congregation decided to formally open proceedings for Gabriel's canonization and, a year later, a committee visited his grave to examine his remains. Upon the arrival of the committee at Isola del Gran Sasso, the townspeople surrounded the church, determined not to have the body of Gabriel taken from their midst. Two years later the Passionists returned to resume their life at Isola del Gran Sasso near the city of Teramo. The two miracles presented for the beatification of Gabriel were the inexplicable healings of Maria Mozzarella from pulmonary tuberculosis and periostitis and the instantaneous cure of Dominic Tiber from an inoperable hernia. Gabriel was beatified by Pope Pius X on May 31, 1908. Present at the ceremony were his brother Michael, his companion brother Sylvester, and his director, Father Norbert. The outbreak of the First World War delayed Gabriel's canonization for a while, but on May 13, 1920, he was raised to the altars by Pope Benedict XV. At the canonization of St. Gabriel, Pope Benedict XV declared him a patron saint of Catholic youth, of students, and of those studying for the priesthood. In 1959, Pope John XXIII named him the patron of the Abruzzi region, where he spent the last two years of his life. Millions of pilgrims visit St. Gabriel's Shrine in Isola del Gran Sasso d'Italia near Teramo each year to see the saint's burial place and the monastic house in which he lived out his final years. The Shrine of St. Gabriel at Isola is particularly popular. There's an ongoing tradition every March, when thousands of high school students from the Abruzzo and the Marsh regions of Italy visit his tomb 100 days before their expected graduation day and pray him in order to achieve good scores on their final. Every two years from mid-July to the beginning of October, the Italian Storos on Lus Foundation hosts at the Sanctuary of St. Gabriel a celebrated exposition of contemporary religious arts. With average of 2 million visitors per year is one of the 15 most visited sanctuaries in the world. The cult of St. Gabriel is especially popular amongst Italian youth. Italian migrants have spread the cult to areas such as the United States, Central America and South America. The Passionist congregation also spreads devotion to the saint wherever they have monasteries. Many miracles have been attributed to the saint's intercession. 
Saint Gemma Galgani held that it was Saint Gabriel who had cured her of a dangerous illness and led her to a passionist vocation. The Saint Gabriel Pazenti Society is a U.S. organization promoting the public recognition of Gabriel and lobbying for his designation by the Vatican as the patron saint of handgunners. The society was founded by gun lobbyist John M. Snyder, who began his effort in 1987. According to the society, Gabriel's marksmanship and proficiency with handguns allegedly saved the village of Isola del Gran Sasso from a band of 20 Garibaldi redshirts in 1860. In 1860, Garibaldi's soldiers entered the mountain village of Isola, Italy. They began to burn and pillage the town, terrorizing its inhabitants. Pazenti, with his seminary rector's permission, walked into the center of town, unarmed, to face the terrorists. One of the soldiers was dragging off a young woman he intended to rape when he saw Pazenti and made a snickering remark about such a young monk being all alone. Pazenti quickly grabbed the soldier's revolver from his belt and ordered the marauder to release the woman. The startled soldier complied, as Pazenti grabbed the revolver of another soldier who came by. Hearing the commotion, the rest of the soldiers came running in Pazenti's direction, determined to overcome the rebellious monk. At that moment a small lizard ran across the road between Pazenti and the soldiers. When the lizard briefly paused, Pazenti took careful aim and struck the lizard with one shot. Turning his two handguns on the approaching soldiers, Pazenti commanded them to drop their weapons. Having seen his handiwork with a pistol, the soldiers complied. Pazenti ordered them to put out the fires they had set, and upon finishing, marched the whole lot out of town, ordering them never to return. The grateful townspeople escorted Pazenti in triumphant procession back to the seminary, thereafter referring to him as the savior of Isola. Amen.